Senator Tom Cotton, but he'll be working today. I don't think he'll be on the mall. Good morning, Senator. Welcome back to the Hugh Hewitt Show. Good morning, Hugh. It's good to be back on, and maybe I should say welcome back to you to the Hugh Hewitt Show after a couple of weeks of rolling your sleeves for the presidential debate last week. Well, it was a uh, trip into Alice in Wonderland world. All three of my questions were about the Chinese Communist Party, one way or the other, about the ships we need to deter them, about the TikTok that is destroying us, and about the fentanyl that is killing people. Uh, and I hope someone noticed that. But I, I wonder what you thought about the answers on the ship question, Senator Cotton. Well, Hugh, I'll confess I didn't see all of the debate, and I'm not sure no. I saw that one as well. Uh, the short answer on, on shipbuilding is, is that we need more and better and more diverse. Um, you know, some people will say that, you know, well, our ships are so much more capable today than they were, you know, 30 or 40 years ago, and, and that is true, but a ship can't be in both the South China Sea and the Persian Gulf at one time. And also given the advances uh, in defensive technology um, in maritime warfare, probably need many smaller and unmanned ships as well. So more more diverse and more advanced is what we need when it comes to shipbuilding. Governor Christie uh, zeroed in on submarines, and that's what I was looking for is an awareness of the under-the-sea realm. And I guess 40 percent of our submarines can't even get maintenance now because we lack the shipyard capacity, Senator. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Hugh. Probably the, the single biggest advantage we have <laughs> on the seas is under the seas uh, when it comes to China and Russia. Uh, in our attack submarine force. And unfortunately, we have both maintenance problems for uh, existing submarines, and we're not building new submarines fast enough. Um, I, I'm pushing hard in both uh, potential supplemental spending bill to aid Ukraine and Israel and Taiwan to ensure that our own submarine industrial base gets the funding it's need. And then, of course, in the annual defense and defense spending bills to increase that spending as well. We really need to get up to more than two boats a year. Um, from where we are right now. now. Senator, I want to switch to Israel if I can. You've said on this show many times it would be best if the president would simply not say anything about anything because he's infirm. Yesterday, his comments on not attacking hospitals was like putting a giant sign over hospitals in Gaza and telling Hamas to retreat there. What, what do you make of that? Do you think he actually meant what he said or did he read the card wrong? I don't know, but he couldn't be more wrong. Uh, the only person uh, or the only uh, people who are violating the law of war in, in Gaza right now are Hamas by using hospitals and other clinics uh, for their operations. And it's not like you, the, the Hamas fighters just ran into hospitals to take cover. They've spent the last 17 years building uh, tunnels and command posts underneath places like the Al Shifa Hospital. Israel has no obligation to steer clear of that hospital under the law of war. It only has to give Hamas uh, and people, the civilians in that hospital, reasonable warning, which they've done, and the opportunity to leave before they turn it into rubble. And if Hamas won't leave it, that's exactly what they should do, because you cannot allow uh, terrorists like Hamas to simply cloak themselves uh, in a simply because they're using civilians and hospitals as human shields. And Joe Biden should know better, uh, and frankly, he should keep his mouth shut if he doesn't know better. Now, Jake Sullivan did the same thing. Now, they've gone back and forth. I really think it's incoherent because on some days they say Israel is abiding by the laws of armed combat and can go into the hospitals and go into the tunnels. And other days they say we're looking for a deconfliction at the hospital. It's incoherent, Senator. It is incoherent. I, I wish Jake Sullivan and Tony <laughs> Blinken and Joe Biden would express half as much outrage at Hamas for using hospitals uh, to provide cover for their military operations as they do for Israel, being compelled to enter hospital and other medical facilities to capture or kill Hamas terrorists. Again, uh, it, it's against the law of war to use such hospitals. ISIS tried to do, to do this to us uh, in Iraq and Syria, and what our forces did uh, that we supported in that war was do exactly what you're supposed to do, provide a fair warning and an opportunity to leave. And then we went in and took down ISIS fighters. That's exactly what Israel should do in Gaza. And they don't need any more patronizing lectures from people like Joe Biden and Tony Blinken and Jake Sullivan, who have no clue what it takes to fight and win a war. Now, I do believe that Israel is utterly indifferent to what world opinion thinks after the trauma of 10-7. Uh, and they're going to do what they have to do to get their people back and to destroy Hamas. I really don't think they care what Joe Biden thinks because America stands with Israel. But I do care a lot about what we're doing about our own military in harm's way in the Middle East. 
Senator, there you can have an immediate impact. Do you think we're doing enough about the more than 50 injured American service people and dozens, scores of attacks on Americans in the Middle East, which is not getting much attention? No, Hugh, absolutely not. I mean, if you go back to the beginning of the Biden administration, we're up to, I believe, over 130 attacks uh, by Iran's proxies on American positions in the Middle East. Americans have been killed. A few dozen have been injured. And uh, the Biden administration's answer is to continue to strike proxy sites, to include empty proxy warehouses. To my knowledge, they have not intentionally targeted a facility with uh, Iran's Revolutionary Guard personnel or other high-value Iranian targets. Um, and, and what they're doing is not scaring or deterring Iran to you because Iran has a strategy to use proxies to avoid responsibility for these attacks. They are validating Iran's proxy strategy. And until we start imposing dire costs on Iran, Iran is going to continue to use that proxy strategy because they see it's working. Um, I, I have to say, if I, if I could recall, Jim Malone, the uh, character Sean Connery played in The Untouchables, he had an approach to these things that seems to understand Middle East politics a lot better than Joe Biden does, which is if they send one of yours to the hospital, you send one of theirs to the morgue, and preferably many of theirs to the morgue. Only then will the Ayatollahs get the picture. I used to have that soundbite, but I had a producer back then, and I don't have any more. Senator, um, can you tell me what the strategy of America is vis-a-vis -vis Iran? Because I, I've seen some reports this morning. I have not verified them, so I'm not going to assert this, that Team Biden wants to get another $10 billion to Iran in a variety of ways for a variety of ends. I, I, I'm not sure if I can believe that. Yeah. It's so astonishing. Will, you, you know, I'll tell you exactly what the Biden administration's strategy is towards Iran after Octo the October 7th attack, exactly what it was on October 6th. They genuinely have not changed our strategy towards Iran in one single way. And you're right that it appears the administration is about to renew sanctions waivers that will provide Iran up to $10 billion more in free cash, just like they continue to refuse to enforce the oil sanctions in Iran, which has provided a lifeline to that uh, terror regime going back nearly three years now. Uh, so, no, we have not changed our policy towards Iran one bit, despite Iran's support for and celebration of uh, the terror atrocities of the October 7th attacks. It couldn't be more foolish or more dangerous. Now, I did see that, but I, I don't know what that means. We are actually, are we going to allow money to flow from third-party banks to Iran in the amount of $10 Neither, billion? Are we? What um, are we doing? This, this specific waiver relates to uh, payments that uh, the Iraqi government um, has made to Iran and been frozen. The administration uh, unfroze by giving sanctions waivers a few months ago. Uh, that waiver is up this week, and it would appear, uh, from all accounts, the Biden administration is going to renew that waiver. Um, again, reports have emerged in the last couple of days. They haven't denied it either, which tells me where they are going to let Iran get another $10 billion, and they're simply trying to avoid uh, any attention for it. You know, probably hoping the president's summit with Xi Jinping in San Francisco tomorrow will overshadow, once again, uh, Joe Biden enriching Iran to the tune of billions of dollars. So we could stop Iran from getting $10 billion and they are choosing not to do so. Is that correctly stated? Um, that is correctly stated on this discrete issue for this week, Hugh, but it's understated the overall situation. We could stop Iran from getting tens of billions of dollars if the president would simply enforce the sanctions against the shipment of Iranian oil. So that, that oil goes primarily to China, by the way, and the president is refusing to enforce sanctions on third-party facilitators like shipping companies, insurance companies, and financial companies that make that shipping possible. So at the same time, Iran is selling weapons to Russia that it uses to kill Ukrainians, and Iran is underwriting Hamas's and Hezbollah's campaign of terror against Israel. We're also allowing Iran to sell cut-rate oil to China. That's how warped and, and silly and foolish our Iran policy is. Iran is uh, all around the world aiding our worst enemies, and Joe Biden is enriching the Ayatollahs. And they're killing Americans. They're trying to. Now, Senator, I try and understand the other point of view so I can better debate it. What is their theory of the case? Because there is no one that I can understand, no theory that I can understand that would give them $10 billion right now, much less well, billions. 
so, well, first off, you, uh, you have to understand that going back to the nuclear deal with Iran in the Obama era, that the Ob- Obama-Biden Democratic Party has superimposed politics in the Middle East. So if you were opposed to Barack Obama's nuclear deal in 2015, then you were wearing a red jersey. That means Benjamin Netanyahu and Mohammed bin Salman and Mohammed bin Zayed uh, and others were de facto extension of the Republican Party in the Middle East, and therefore the partisan adversaries of Joe Biden and Barack Obama. That's the first thing you need to understand. Second, much like uh, British leaders in the interwar period between World War I and World War II that continued to refuse to acknowledge German violations of the Treaty of Versailles because it would necessitate a response, perhaps a military response, the Biden administration refuses to acknowledge all the many crimes of Iran against America and really against the civilized world because it might necessitate a response, like blowing up uh, a site with Revolutionary Guard Corps personnel in Iraq or Syria or striking targets inside Iran itself the way Ronald Reagan would do when he blew up half of Iran's Navy for attacking a U.S. naval vessel. Uh, if, if the Biden administration acknowledges all of these crimes and Iran's culpability, they know that the American people might demand the military response. And that is the one thing that Joe Biden absolutely refuses to do.